Hey up everybody, uh, I'm on part 4 of my riding car, riding truck, riding trolley, whichever you want to call it. Uh, so in parts 1, 2 and 3 you'll have seen where I've got up to, to this stage. I've now got the suspension made, the wheels made, the axles made, the frame made. So take a look back at parts 1, 2 and 3 if you want to catch up on that. And today then I'm going to deal with part 4 which is the braking system. So what have we got here then? Coming off the brake hangers on the frame there's the pivot bar which holds the actuating lever which is operated by the brake lever. So that's pulling this bar and simultaneously pulling the other side, one's going down, one's coming up and it's pulling the brakes on uh, independently but it's equalising the pressure on them and coming off the actuating lever there's a clevis and a rod, a tie rod with a thread on so you can adjust the brakes to get the correct setting on your wheels so there's another clevis down here that goes to the uh, equalising bar and that pivots that's connected to, to the brake hangers which pivot on the suspension up here and then you've got your brake shoe onto your wheel That's just a schematic layout of all the braking system and its components. I'm going to deal with brake blocks first and if you want to know in great detail how I, how I duck brake blocks take a look back at my um, How to Build a Locomotive series. I'll put a link up somewhere up here and direct you to that it'll show you my machining brake blocks so you can take extracts from that if you're not sure but what I'm doing I've just got this lump of cast iron and I'm going to machine the radius on the same radius of, as the wheels cut it off and then I'm going to shape it to that to them dimensions and put the slot in for the pivot with it where it pivots uh, that's one I've just cut off and I'm going to cut these angles on and then put a slot down it and then put a pivot hole in it
I've got most of the components made now, in fact I've got all of them made. Uh, I did a few off camera so I'll just briefly run through everything. Uh, the brake blocks then, I think you saw me doing those. Now if you've not got a milling machine there's nothing to stop you using a hacksaw and a file and, and making them by hand. Um, then I've got four clevises which I've made to that drawing. I've made them out of hexagonal because that's that's what, what I had on stock. They don't have to be hexagonal. Uh, there's a slot in and then a tapped hole M6 for the tie bar to fit in too. Four of those. Uh, then I've got this uh, actua actuating lever boss which I've fabricated. Um, I've welded the arm onto the onto this boss to that drawer in there then the four brake hangers the only thing you need to know extra here is so if you're doing it to my dimensions you'll have to put a bit of relief in the brake hangers just to miss the pivot rod on the suspension the hole in the in the center it's not in the center it's inch and three quarter from that hole at the top an inch and a quarter up from the bottom. The equalising bars, there's two of these. There's nothing to stop you making them out of round bar. And then putting a flat in the middle. And I've made it this thickness and reduced it in the middle because you've got to get a tapped hole in each end to fit the hangers onto. I've done them for BA. Uh, if you've not got BA, you'd probably do them either three or four millimeter the brake hanger pivot rods I've made them from some from some M8 bolts with a spigot on the end with the brake hanger fits and pivots and then they tapped 4BA again uh, just to just to locate them on that spigot. So there, four of those to that drawing, and then the um, this is the brake lever pivot where you press the handle to apply the brakes. Uh, that's just self-explanatory. Uh, the only thing I've not put on the drawing is the split pin hole where the actuating lever fits like that that's got a 1 8 split pin uh, to drive it the only thing I've not done on this drawing is this boss that fits on the end of this so when it goes through the hangers on the frame it comes through the other side to get your brake lever on that you operate with your hand so all that is is a boss uh, drilled and tapped the same thread as whatever you put on your pivot and then it'll have another hole drilled and tapped when I've got it all assembled to give me position of where my handle is going to be so what I'll do then I'll go ahead and uh, assemble it all before I paint it and then show you it all in uh, as it's going to be located on the riding car that's all the braking components manufactured now from scratch uh, so uh, like I said in a previous video about the suspension units etc there's nothing hard and fast about these sketches I've made and the dimensions you can adapt them to suit your materials or to suit a different size riding car uh, so what I'll do then in part 5 I'll get all these parts assembled onto the actual riding car and show you where they go, how they work etc etc so if you've not seen parts 1, 2 and 3 on making the frame and the suspension take a look back at them and if not I'll catch you on part 5 assembling all the braking system so I'm going to sign off for now then thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next part. Bye for now then.